it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The coast is clear. The humans have left. Come on, let's go. Masia, why are the fish looking so tired? Because they're not getting enough air in there. The water in the aquarium is dirty and it needs air, but the filter isn't working. The filter? Yes, that device over there. These fish need our help, and if we don't do something right now, they could die! Right! First, I'll fix that light, while you and Masia go over there and see what is wrong with the filter. But I want to go and look at the filter, too! You're too small for this! Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! And you're a giant! I mean, you're like six feet tall, huh? That's enough arguing! Nolik, let's go! Well, let's check it! Not working. Nolik, where are you? I'm up here. What are you doing up there? Nothing. Holding on. We don't have time for that. Get down. We have to get this switch working. Masia, what's the matter with the filter? Well, probably something's caught inside and it's stopping the motor from turning. A filter is used to keep the aquarium water clean. A motor in a filter turns the paddles and pumps water through a fine net or a sponge. The dirt in the water gets trapped in there and the cleaned water is put back into the aquarium. Many filters not only clean the water but also add air to it so there will be more oxygen in the water. You see, even though fish live their lives in water, they need oxygen just like all of us. of ways for people to breathe underwater. As an experiment, try putting an empty glass upside down in water and you'll see that some of the air stays in there. That's the idea behind the ancient diving bell. An empty bell was lowered under the water and some of the air remained in there for the diver to breathe. And about 200 years ago, the first diving suits were invented. The diver got air from a hose that started above the water. This let the diver spend a long time under the water, and even walk around on the bottom, but just not too far. Later on, people learned to squeeze a lot of air inside of metal tanks, and that's when scuba diving started. Scuba divers breathe the air stored in these tanks, so they can swim freely, and even dive deep down below the water. Our work is done. The light is on, and the filter is working. And the fish look so excited! As if they're not fish, but monsters. Thank goodness they're behind glass. <gasps> Papus! Just hang on! We'll be right there to save you! <sighs> but I don't even have my pack mat Ooh, look how they're chopping their teeth. They must be so hungry. You're right, they're hungry. Nolik, come on! <laughs> I 
I can't believe those fish. They're so ungrateful. We went ahead and fixed their filter, and all they wanted to do was gobble us up. And I'm the one who saved you from them. I was the one watching what was going on. <gasps> Oh, gee. Hold it. Do you think giving her some uh, food will help? As long as you're not thinking that food is me. Whoa! I almost caught one yesterday. I chased him by the flag. But if I told my daddy, he'd say, It's, it's all inside, inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them. Or find their way. The Fixie Phone. Tom Thomas! Huh? Try to guess what we have with us. You guess what I have. A banana. A race car. No, not that. Chocolate. A, p a pair of socks. Ha! <laughs> Do you give up? My dad bought a new phone for himself and gave me his old one. He said I can keep it. Oh, wow! And what have you got? Look! You got a telephone, too. It's better than that. This is a fixie phone. Papu's got himself a new fixie phone. And he gave this old one to Simka. And can you make calls on it? Uh, take a guess. Come on, let me show him. <laughs> hi there, Papu's. Hi, Nolik. Why are you calling? Uh, just to say hi. No, Lick. Don't just call me if you know I'm working. All right. See that? So what? I can make calls on my phone. Calls to humans, that is. But to fixies, you can't. A fixie phone is a smartphone made just for fixies. Not only can fixies call each other with it, but they can get onto their own special fixie internet. On a fixie phone, you can find a camera, a flashlight, news, games, movies, and fixie ditties. Those are the fixie's favorite songs. Fixie kids love them, and so do their parents, because fixie phones can easily let parents know where their kids are and whether or not they're in trouble. Over the years, humans have learned how to turn telephones into mobile phones and mobile phones into smartphones. They use them to call each other, and to go on to their internet. A smartphone is almost as powerful as a computer, but they still have a long way to go to be as good as fixie phones. Yeah, that's really cool, guys. Only this phone does the same. But can your phone do this? Take a look over here. You mean here? It's just a mouse. And now, look here. Whoa! But he's not... he's not on there. But look, he's here. And that's not all. Watch. A mouse helps the user navigate around the computer. And when we move it... You get it? No one else can see the fixie except for you. And he can help you. Super. Oh, it'd be great to have my own fixie phone. What are you talking about? You're not a fixie. Uh, what a shame. I'm off to school, guys. Uh, he gets so upset. He even forgot to take his phone. I have an idea. <laughs> my smartphone's my best friend. I love to hear it beeping. So I keep it by my side even when I'm sleeping. Bing bong all day long. Bing bong all day long. Bing bong all day long. Even when I'm sleeping. With my phone I play alone. I don't need my brother. Soon they'll make a brand new app to replace my My mother check my mail, send it text a million times an hour. I forgot to plug it in, now I'm out of power. Bing bong all day long, bing bong all day long, bing bong all day long, now I'm out of power. Bing bong all day long, bing bong all day long, bing bong all day long, now I'm out of power. We finished. Tish! Look!
look, it's a... Surprise! Wow, this is great! Now I've got my own fixie phone. It's just like you've got. Well, pretty close. Tom Thomas! Tom Thomas, let me use your phone to call myself. I need to find my phone. Oh, wow. You've changed everything in here. Where am I? I guess I'm Papus. <laughs> what a funny name you came up with for me. <laughs> Nolik, just stop. I don't have time for your fooling around. What? Who is that? That's, uh, not Nolik. Who is this? Do you know who I just called? Does anyone know who this phone belongs to out here? Oh, your mother found it. I'm coming. We'll fix those numbers later. Ugh, Papus is gonna really give it to us. Give me your phone, Tom Thomas, and I'll delete all the Fixie's numbers from it. But how can I call you up then? Why would you have to call us? We're always close by. They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. The barcode. And so. What do we do if we happen to see humans? Hide from them, right? And what if you've got nowhere to hide? Then we turn ourselves into screws. That's correct. Where could it be? Uh, where on earth could I have put it? Oh, I'm such a scatterbrain. Ah, it's Professor Eugenius. There's no need to hide from him. He's our friend. Where has it gone? Ah, uh, did you lose something again, Professor? Yeah, how did you guess? It's just awful. Yesterday I started testing a new iron, and today, ah, uh, it's totally disappeared into thin air. Where could you have put that thing? Um, I've got it down to two places. It could be in the warehouse or... not in the warehouse. Yeah, that information will help us find it. Or not help us find it. <laughs> Class, follow me to the warehouse. Wow, look at all these boxes. If we have to look inside each one of them, it'll take us two days. Maybe we'll get lucky. Let's look in this one. No! Inside there is a fan. A fan? Wow, it's a fan. Hmm, and what's inside this one? Uh, a mixer. Yeah, amazing. And what's in this box? An electric kettle. Made in Germany, by the way. He's right. There is a kettle in there. Professor, is this some trick? I don't get it. Grandpus, how do you do it? It's got to be magic. What else? Here's how I think he's doing it. I think the professor has glasses made to see through the boxes. <laughs> of course not. I only know how to read the barcode that you can see on each of those boxes. Oh, that. Exactly. <laughs> If you look at the printing on packages and boxes, you will often find a symbol with a lot of black lines and numbers. These symbols are called barcodes. Each barcode has all sorts of information. What the item is, what country it came from, and even in which factory it was made. With the help of a special reading device, a scanner, it's possible to read all the information the barcode holds. It really is an excellent system for stores to know what they've got. You don't even need a scanner to do it? I can figure out barcodes without one. I'll teach you if you want. Class. Let's see. We're looking for a box with an iron. There. Well, bring in the professor. 
Today, on almost everything that is sold, there is some kind of mark. For instance, this kind of mark is called a barcode. And this one, a QR code. These marks help us find out a lot of information. Suppose you walk by a building and see a QR code on it. Just point the camera on your mobile phone at it, and information about who built it and when it was built will appear on the screen. Isn't that great? It's a shame not every phone can do this yet. And that's not all. There are also marks that work without pictures. There are electronic chips that can hold information. These chips can be put inside of ID cards or travel passes, and all you need to do is press the card near a reader so it can check if you're allowed to go on through. Ah, uh, you just made my day. You found it so quickly. What would I do without you? Huh? Is something wrong? This is not an iron. Whose sandwich is that? Mine. Yesterday I wanted to put it into the fridge, only I guess I put it into my... Oh, I just get distracted so easily. Look, we need to think this through logically. If you went and placed your sandwich into the box where the iron should have gone, then you must have put your iron... In, in the, the refrigerator. refrigerator! Oh, here you are. Here you are, my new iron. Oh, I looked everywhere for you. Thank you, my friends, once again. There's no need to thank us at all. You're always there when we need help. You've even let us open our own school here in your laboratory. And we don't have to hide ourselves. Yeah, that's because you're so kind and you love fixies. Can you believe that fixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. And what do you think? Should we go and see a movie? <sighs> Moo? <sighs> Fee! Cool! Hey, you didn't type everything that I said. You should listen more carefully. And you should try using less words. <gasps> Nolik, hey! Alia? What are you arguing about? Uh, well... I was writing a letter to Johnny. I was, not you. I messed up my finger, and Nolik offered to help me. I had no idea that you're such a yapper. Oh. Now I see. Tell him, Thomas. <laughs> Didn't you know that you can call Johnny straight from your computer? You sure? You see that picture of the phone? Just click on it. So what movie do you want to go see? Hey there! I don't care. Just not pirates and those robots. Hey, Tom Thomas, why aren't you answering me? I am answering you. Hello? Hello? Talking to the microphone. Uh, I don't have a microphone. There you go. End of conversation. All right, then talk right into there. Simka, come on. You use headphones to listen. It's a joke. It's no joke. We talk into microphones and listen through headphones. But both of these devices use a special membrane to do their job. The membrane inside of a microphone is used to capture sound that is then sent through wires as an electrical signal. And inside a pair of headphones, a membrane helps turn that electrical signal back into sound. So it turns out that a microphone and headphones are built in a very similar way, even though they are used quite differently. And so I talk right into here? Johnny, hello? Just wait a second. First we need to plug your headphones into the hole where the microphone gets plugged in. Ah, I get it. Go ahead. Now it's a microphone. Johnny, I'm here. Can you hear? Yeah, he can hear, but you can't. Nolik, switch it over to the headphone jack. 
I already saw robots. And I already saw it. No, Lick! I don't think there's anyone who didn't see it. You didn't see it? Then let's go see it. No, I don't wanna. I think the robots will be even more boring than the pirates. Do you want to see the pirates? Make up your mind. Do you want to see the pirates or the robots? I don't want to see either one. Nolik, what are you doing? What am I doing? It's because you and Johnny don't listen to each other. I've got a good idea. You need to talk like police on their walkie-talkies. When they're done talking and they're ready for an answer, they say, over. Great idea. When we talk to someone using the telephone, there are two channels for the sound. We talk through the first channel and listen to the other person talking through the second one. But sometimes two people need to talk to each other using only one channel. For instance, sailors and taxi drivers use one channel radio sets. When a radio set's turned on, you can hear the other person talking, but they can't hear you talk unless you push a special button down. Then they'll hear you, but you won't hear them. So that means you have to take turns talking, because if everybody tries talking at once, nobody will understand anything. So then, to let people know that you're done talking, and you're ready to listen to what they have to say, say over. Johnny, hello. Why don't we try talking like police on their walkie-talkies? Whenever you're done talking, say to me, over, over. All right, so are we going to the movies? Over. Nah, I don't feel like it. Why don't we go play ball instead? Over. Sounds good. Who were you talking to before? Over. Uh... Uh, I can't tell you that. It's classified. And we policemen, we follow the rules. Wow, that worked out great. You two are the best. Over. Oops. <laughs> we try our best. Over. We do. Especially me. <sighs> I'm completely over. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Reflexes. Add this to that. Now, what do you get? Ah, uh, three. Don't you remember? Bark, bark, bark. All you have to do is bark three times. That's too hard a trick for Chusaka. Maybe you could teach her to jump through a hoop. Uh, I already tried. She just sits there. Come on, Chusaka, give it a try. Try showing her this sugar. Chusaka. Alley-oop! Come on, jump! <laughs> See ya, Tom Thomas. It's time for us to go to school. See you later, Animal Tamer. Great job, Chusaka. Our lesson for today is on the subject of reflexes. I'll write it here for you. R... What's the lesson? Hm. Someone's late again. Ah, colleague, my glasses are gone. Are they here? They're right there on your forehead. Ooh, how about that? Forgive me for interrupting. Let's continue our class. And so... Thanks so much. So you turned into screws again. Does anyone know why that is? Because we have to hide ourselves from humans. But you don't have to hide yourself from Professor Eugenius. But we didn't know it was him at the door. Right you are. You had already transformed before you had time to think. And that's what we call a reflex. <laughs> to explain it in simple words, a reflex is when our body reacts to something automatically. 
without needing any time at all to think about it. When we touch something very hot, we instantly jerk our hand back. When we're about to fall, we swing our arms and legs to try to keep our balance. <laughs> Just imagine what would happen if we started thinking how and in which direction to move them. So it's fair to say that our reflexes help to protect us. They protect us. Ugh, my nose itches. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't mean it. Professor, uh, sneeze. Is that also a reflex? It most certainly is one. Fire didn't want to, but then his nose tickled and achoo! Mm, bless you, too. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, do dogs also have, uh, reflexes? Of course dogs have reflexes. All animals do. Yeah! It's something all good animal trainers know. They use the animal's reflexes to teach them tricks. Many humans teach their pets lots of commands, like to bring a ball, to count, or even to dance. But to train a pet, you gotta know what to do. A good animal trainer always has plenty of treats handy. As soon as an animal follows a command correctly, like standing on its hind legs or jumping over a hurdle, the animal gets a treat. And then the trainer makes a unique signal right away, like clicking his fingers or blowing a whistle. After repeating this training over and over, the animal develops a reflex. Once it gets the signal, it carries out the command and then gets a treat. But the most important thing about animal training is to love your trainee and never hurt it. <gasps> Otherwise, no treat will work. Tom Thomas, we just learned in Fixie School how you can train Chusaka. Yeah? With the help of reflexes. With what? Where's Chusaka? Call her. Chusaka, come here. Give her a math problem, a nice simple one. Add this to that. Now what do you get? It's a miracle! Three! You got it! No, it's not a miracle. Science is what it is. You know how Chusaka barks whenever she sees a fixie around. That's what we call a reflex, you know. I understand. And do you know how I can teach her jumping? Well, we didn't figure that out yet. Wait a sec, I know how. Chasing fixies. Isn't that one of Chusaka's reflexes? Probably, although... That's great, so let's go and train the dog. <sighs> Nothing's ever too much for a good friend. Chusaka. <laughs> Pretty tough work being a dog trainer. Can you believe that fixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. is clear. The humans have left. Come on, let's go. Masia, why are the fish looking so tired? Because they're not getting enough air in there. The water in the aquarium is dirty and it needs air, but the filter isn't working. The filter? Yes, that device over there. These fish need our help, and if we don't do something right now, they could die. Right. First, I'll fix that light, while you and Masia go over there and see what is wrong with the filter. But I want to go and look at the filter, too. You're too small for this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. And you're a giant. I mean, you're like six feet tall, huh? That's enough arguing. Nolik, let's go. Well, let's check it. Not working. Nolik, where are you? I'm up here. What are you doing up there? Nothing. Holding on. 
We don't have time for that. Get down. We have to get this switch working. Marcia, what's the matter with the filter? Well, probably something's caught inside and it's stopping the motor from turning. A filter is used to keep the aquarium water clean. A motor in a filter turns the paddles and pumps water through a fine net or a sponge. The dirt in the water gets trapped in there and the cleaned water is put back into the aquarium. Many filters not only clean the water but also add air to it so there will be more oxygen in the water. You see, even though fish live their lives in water, they need oxygen just like all of us. of ways for people to breathe underwater. As an experiment, try putting an empty glass upside down in water and you'll see that some of the air stays in there. That's the idea behind the ancient diving bell. An empty bell was lowered under the water and some of the air remained in there for the diver to breathe. And about 200 years ago, the first diving suits were invented. The diver got air from a hose that started above the water. This let the diver spend a long time under the water, and even walk around on the bottom, but just not too far. Later on, people learned to squeeze a lot of air inside of metal tanks, and that's when scuba diving started. Scuba divers breathe the air stored in these tanks, so they can swim freely, and even dive deep down below the water. Our work is done. The light is on, and the filter is working. And the fish look so exciting! As if they're not fish, but monsters. Thank goodness they're behind glass. <gasps> Papus! Just hang on! We'll be right there to save you! <sighs> but I don't even have my pack in that. Ooh, look how they're chopping their teeth. They must be so hungry. You're right, they're hungry. Nolik, come on! <laughs> Fish. They're so ungrateful. We went ahead and fixed their filter, and all they wanted to do was gobble us up. And I'm the one who saved you from them. I was the one watching what was going on. <gasps> oh, gee. Hold it. Do you think giving her some uh, food will help? As long as you're not thinking that food is me. Whoa!
inside the shark. <laughs> no, like, Tom Thomas couldn't even fit half of himself inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh-huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one, but I know that I heard a hee-hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> hm. I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? Oh, who is that? Ah! Sick of the knife, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you going to look for me? Arbor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knights' horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Because I can't. Don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see. <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battle. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well, there. Did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? Nolik went to get it. Tom Thomas! Helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Ugh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> It's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The lever. Oh, 
strong. That's so light, I could lift it up with my finger. Oh my, but do you think you could lift up your nightstand? Don't know, never tried it. So then go on. <laughs> no way. And you are so much bigger than that nightstand. But watch, I can lift this big pencil. And just look how much smaller I am. So, who's stronger, you or me? Hmm, well, I guess it's not me. The Fixies may be very small, but they are actually much stronger than humans. Yes, it's true. <laughs> what, you don't believe me? Well, who's stronger, an elephant or an ant? You think it's the elephant. Well, of course, it's so much bigger. But did you know that one ant can lift up 50 ants its own size? And an elephant? It can't even hold up one. So it turns out that for its size, an ant is much stronger than an elephant. And the same goes for Fixies. Fixies are incredibly strong for their size. They can lift things that are a hundred times heavier than they are. And Fixies can jump 50 times higher than their own height. If humans were as strong as Fixies are, they'd be able to lift an automobile all by themselves. Yeah, Tom Thomas, it's time you built up your strength. Well, how? Start lifting dumbbells, or if you want to, you can use my barbell. <laughs> no thanks. I'll use the dumbbells my dad has. They're in his office, I think. Oh, there's one. And where's the other one? Aha, there you are. I'll get you out of there. Come on, come on. I'm helping you here. It's stuck. All right. Move aside. I'll get it right out. What is this, glue to the floor or something? <laughs> hey, what's all the racket? Hi there, Simka. We can't get the dumbbell out from under there. Well, of course you can't. The sofa's pressing down on it. So that's what it is. And I was worried that I lost all my strength. Well, that means we have to lift up this sofa. We can't do that. It's too heavy for us. We can do it. Tom Thomas, get me your hockey stick from your room. Mm-hmm. We can't move a sofa with a hockey stick. Don't worry, you'll see. <sighs> Here, I brought it. What is it for? We're gonna use it as a lever. A lever? Well, yeah. A lever works the same way that a seesaw does, with a board resting on top of a piece called the fulcrum. But with a lever, one side is longer than the other. And that's the secret to its power. With a lever's help, it's possible to lift any weight. All you need to do is get the short arm of the lever under the load and push down on the long arm. And the longer the arm, the more weight you can lift. And that's how a lever makes people stronger. Well, can we find a fulcrum in here? Maybe this dumbbell. Can that be our fulcrum? Great idea. Now you're thinking the right way. You ready to go? Let's go. Lean on it, Tom Thomas. <laughs> Yay! It's working! Tideesh! I'm so strong. Did you see? Now watch how I lift Dad's heavy weights for you. Look, I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I told you. You'd be better off training with my weights. Didn't you just see me lift up the sofa? You didn't lift the sofa, the lever did. Did you ever hear the saying, knowledge is power? I've heard it. Although, some physical power won't hurt you either. So pick up your lever and go out and play some hockey. You know how built those hockey players are. I almost caught one yesterday. I chased him by the flag. But if I told my daddy, say, it's, it's all inside your head. head. You really cannot catch them. Or find their whereabouts. But if you meet a fixie 
please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The fixie phone. Tom Thomas. Huh? Try to guess what we have with us. You guess what I have. A banana. Uh, a race car. No, not that. Chocolate. Uh, a pair of socks. Ha! <laughs> Do you give up? My dad bought a new phone for himself and gave me his old one. He said I can keep it. Oh, wow! And what have you got? Look! Ah, you got a telephone, too. It's better than that. This is a fixie phone. Papu's got himself a new fixie phone. And he gave this old one to Simka. And can you make calls on it? Uh, take a guess. Come on, let me show him. <laughs> hi there, Papus. Hi, Nolik. Why are you calling? Uh, just to say hi. Nolik, don't just call me if you know I'm working. All right. See that? So what? I can make calls on my phone. Calls to humans, that is. But to fixies, you can't. A fixie phone is a smartphone made just for fixies. Not only can fixies call each other with it, but they can get onto their own special fixie internet. On a fixie phone, you can find a camera, a flashlight, news, games, movies, and fixie ditties. Those are the fixies' favorite songs. Fixie kids love them, and so do their parents, because fixie phones can easily let parents know where their kids are and whether or not they're in trouble. Over the years, humans have learned how to turn telephones into mobile phones and mobile phones into smartphones. They use them to call each other and to go on to their internet. A smartphone is almost as powerful as a computer, but they still have a long way to go to be as good as fixie phones. Yeah, that's really cool, guys. Only this phone does the same. But can your phone do this? Take a look over here. You mean here? It's just a mouse. And now, look here. Whoa! But he's not... he's not on there. But look, he's here. And that's not all. Watch. A mouse helps the user navigate around the computer. And when we move it... You get it? No one else can see the fixie except for you. And he can help you. Super! Oh, it'd be great to have my own fixie phone. What are you talking about? You're not a fixie. Uh, what a shame. I'm off to school, guys. Uh, he gets so upset. He even forgot to take his phone. I have an idea. <laughs> It's a surprise! Wow, this is great! Now I've got my own fixie phone. It's just like you've got. Well, pretty close. Tom Thomas! Tom Thomas, let me use your phone to call myself. I need to find my phone. Oh, wow. You've changed everything in here. Where am I? I guess I'm Papus. <laughs> what a funny name you came up with for me. <laughs> Nolik, just stop. I don't have time for your fooling around. What? Who is that? That's, uh, not Nolik. Who is this? Do you know who I just called? Does anyone know who this phone belongs to out here? 
Oh, your mother found it. I'm coming. We'll fix those numbers later. Ugh, Papoose is gonna really give it to us. Give me your phone, Tom Thomas, and I'll delete all the Fixie's numbers from it. But how can I call you up then? Why would you have to call us? We're always close by. Can you believe that Fixies are such itty bitty creatures? Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a Fixie, please don't let their secret out. The remote. Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Should I let it go now? Whoa. Oops. <laughs> Nolik, hide somewhere. Nolik? Where are you hiding? Nolik! Hello there, Fixies! Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing! I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it! Oh, no, no, it's in big-time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Simka, Tom Thomas, here I am. I'm over here. <sighs> For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka. I ran to get a pack a mat. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great. But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack -a mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote. A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second. Chusaka Chusaka with a brain full of rush. Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough. All right, then. out for the remote's race. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see him. What are you saying? You can! If 
you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. to practice with it a little before the exam. Take it! <gasps> You're really good with that thing. Good. I couldn't be any worse with it. I wanted a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Actually, you were pretty close there. You did manage to get the hose, at least. <laughs> this is not at all funny. In order to get a tool out of a pack of a fixie must not only press the button on his chest, but he must also clearly picture exactly the tool he needs. By the time they are adults, this is easy for fixies to do. But while they're children, they must study hard to master this important skill. As fixies learn about new tools, they take exams to prove they know how they work. And if they pass an exam, the new tool is added to their pack of mats. And there's no end to what you can find inside. Screwdrivers, hammers, ladders, vacuums, and even soldering irons. But many of the tools that fixies use look quite different from the ones that humans have. And the reason for this is very simple. It's because fixies have to fix appliances that are much bigger than they are. Uh, I just wish I knew which tool was going to be on that exam. I got it! You just stay right here! Grandpus! What? Um, on the exam, which tool are you gonna ask about? It's a secret. Uh, it's too bad. But I'm sure you can keep a secret, right? Of course! Then I'll tell you. Today's exam is on pliers, you see? You won't tell anyone, will you? Not a chance! Uh, I'll never pass it. You will! He's gonna ask about pliers. Huh? How could you know that? It's a secret. <laughs> okay, Digit. See if you can get the pliers out of there. A pair of pliers is a great tool indeed. To grab and turn things, it's the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use them. All your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are Be careful how you use them, or your fingers, you could bruise them. Pliers are a great tool indeed. Good going. You got it. Thanks a lot, Nolik. It's not really me you should be thanking. Krampus, thanks a lot. For what? The secret. What secret? About the pliers. Oh, that. You know, I picked a new topic. Um, I decided that a hammer will be the tool. A hammer? Only it's a secret. I remember! <laughs> the topic I changed! It's a hammer! You sure about that? Totally. All right. 
I'll try to do it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. To pound in nails, it is the tool that you need. Just be careful how you use it, or your finger, you could bruise it. A hammer is a great tool indeed. Super! I'm sure you're gonna pass. That's only if he asks me about a hammer. I'll be right back! Grandpoos, it's a hammer for sure? Nah. A hammer would be way too easy for those kids. So now it is a drill. A drill? But only... It's a secret! <laughs> now I know. There's no doubt about it at all. It's a drill! <sighs> a drill is such a great tool in Wrenches, drills, screwdrivers, vices, mallets, saws, and pliers. All of these are super duper great tools, yes indeed. That's all. That's enough of this. I'll just go and take the exam. Yeah. Digit, come on in. Um, Professor, well, what do you want to ask me on today's exam? Nothing! You already passed! What? You mean you're not going to ask me anything at all? No need! You're excellent at getting tools out of a pack -a mat But how could you know that? That's a secret! And we Fixies sure know how to keep secrets! <laughs> Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. The clocks. Go around. Left side. That's crazy. You'll crash. No, I won't. See, I told you. What? Huh? Nothing. Hmm. Now you talk with your computer like it's your friend. Listen, that's enough playing for today. Oh, Mom, just a little more. I'll give you half an hour while I cook dinner, and that'll be enough for today with the computer. Uh. <sighs> <sighs> This stinks. I'll never get through all of these levels in half an hour. No way. Hey, but what if we could stretch out the half hour? How? We could take the hands on the clock and move them back a little. Mom will catch us. Fine, then let's slow down the speed of the clock. Yeah, but, but how? how? She gotta know things like that. Since olden times, many clocks run with the help of a pendulum. The pendulum controls how fast the hands of the clock turn. If you make it longer, the pendulum will start to swing slower and the clock's hands will slow down. If you make the pendulum shorter, the clock will tick faster. Most clocks that are made today don't use pendulums. They run with the help of springs or with an electronic chip instead. But even so, there are ways to change the speed of these clocks too. Push it! Wow, you did it! It's amazing how much slower it is. That'll give you lots of time to play. But now you gotta slow down the clocks in the kitchen. Yeah, and every other clock you got. I just have to turn this to make the pendulum longer. Uh-huh. And now the clock will go slower. Fire! Now that clock over there. Let's go do it. That's it. We slowed down every clock, and your mom didn't see a thing. That's great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wow, Tom Thomas, you're cool. Amazing! He got another one! Awesome! 
You're unbelievable! Way to go! Huh. That's strange. Hooray! Incredible! Yay! I did every level! Oh, thanks! You're both just the Time Masters of the Universe! Yeah, but I'm getting really hungry and Mom hasn't called me for dinner. Because a half hour hasn't passed on the clock. Hey, do you smell that? Something is burning! What happened? A fire? I don't get it. I was just waiting for 30 minutes like I always do. But everything burned this time. Maybe the clock stopped? No, take a look. They're working. Oh, I'll make you some oatmeal. Oatmeal for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I need to, uh, I'll be right back. You see what you've done? Time masters of the universe? You gotta go speed those clocks back up. Okay, okay, we'll speed them up. They'll be caught up in no time. Humans have come up with lots of different ways to measure time. For example, if you stand a stick in the ground, you can measure the time of day by watching where its shadow falls. That's a very simple clock called a sundial. Another simple and ancient clock is a water clock. It keeps track of time by measuring how much water has poured out of it. And if the clock uses sand instead of water, it's called an hourglass. But humans weren't able to accurately keep track of the time until they invented mechanical clocks. They come in all sorts of sizes, from grandfather clocks to watches worn around the wrist. Today, we also have easy-to-read and accurate electronic watches and clocks. But the most accurate clock of them all is the atomic clock. It tells the entire world the exact time. Tom Thomas, why is your alarm clock ringing in the middle of the night, huh? Really? Is it still night out? Look, Tom Thomas. Uh, but the clock says that it's morning. Interesting. Yesterday, Fire and I sped up all the clocks. So that's the reason the alarm went off. Sped them up? Are you crazy? Tom Thomas asked us. Hmm, so what do we have to do now? Don't you know? Get to school, it's time. Uh... I'm joking. Whew. Go back to sleep. Don't worry, I'll get all the clocks working right again. Can I go and fix them with you? Ha! <laughs> fix them? You boys are the ones that always make the problems. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The remote. Simka, the button got stuck on the remote. How can we get it back out of there? Look and learn, Nolik. Please help. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, oh, oh. Should I let it go now? Oh. Oops. <laughs> Nolik, hide somewhere. Nolik, she stole the remote. Nolik, where are you hiding? Nolik! Hello there, Fixies. Hey, where are you? Hey, Tom Thomas, you got here just in time. Chusaka ran off with the TV remote. And so what? I can turn it on without it. And my favorite cartoon is just about to start. Forget about the cartoons, will ya? Nolik is missing! I'm afraid Nolik hid inside of the remote. And Chusaka took it. Oh no, Nolik's in big time trouble. Tom Thomas, there must be something you can do! Chusaka, Chusaka, come here. Where is that dog hiding? I'm gonna go look in the other rooms. Tom Thomas, here I am. I'm over here. For now, I'll wait here. Chusaka's not out there. Where are you? Hey, Simka. 
I ran to get a pack a mat. What are you gonna do with it? I'm gonna search for the infrared ray that comes out of the remote. That's so great. But what is it? I'll explain it to you. Inside of most remote controls, there's a special type of light bulb called a light emitting diode, or LED for short. When we press a button, the LED sends an invisible infrared ray. And in the TV, there is a receiver for these invisible rays. The TV understands the command that comes from the remote control and carries it out, like changing the channel or the volume. If the rays are invisible, then how is it possible to see them? In the pack -a mat I've got these special goggles that can help me. And now what? Yell to Nolik. Get him to close the contact on any one of the buttons. Nolik! You gotta push one of the buttons down on the remote. A button? But how am I gonna do that? Wait, one second. Two socks and two socks with a brain full of rush. Nothing for you here. But here's something. There he is. He's over there. Chusaka, come here. Do you want a hot dog? So you want to play tough? All right, then. out for the remote's rays. It's just a shame it's impossible for me to see him. What are you saying? You can! If you want to see infrared rays, all you have to do is look through a digital camera. Try it for yourself. Turn on the camera on a mobile telephone. Now go ahead and press any button on the remote control and point the camera toward the front of it. You'll see a bright dot on the screen of the camera. That's the light emitting diode working. It's letting off a special light that can't be seen by the naked eye. It's also possible to point the remote control at a mirror. And then through the camera, you can see how the light emitting diode turns itself on. So what that means is that invisible rays bounce off of a mirror in the same way that regular light does. So you can control the TV by bouncing the light from a remote control off of a mirror. You don't believe me? Then go ahead and try it yourself. By the way, if your toys weren't all stuffed under the bed, we would have found the remote without the goggles. Don't worry about it. When the cartoons are over, I'll put them away. So, you done watching? Time to clean up. <laughs> <laughs> Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small it makes you doubt. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a fixie, please don't let their secret out. Reflexes. Add this to that. Now, what do you get? Ah, uh, three. Don't you remember? Bark, bark, bark. All you have to do is bark three times. That's too hard a trick for Chusaka. Maybe you could teach her to jump through a hoop. Uh, I already tried. She just sits there. Come on, Chusaka. Give it a try. Try showing her this sugar. Chusaka. Alley-oop! Come on, jump! <laughs> See ya, Tom Thomas! It's time for us to go to school! See you later, Animal Tamer! Great job, Chusaka! Our lesson for today is on the subject of reflexes. I'll write it here for you. R... What's the lesson? Hm. Someone's late again! Ah, colleague, my glasses are gone. Are they here? They're right there! 
hair on your forehead. Ooh, how about that? Forgive me for interrupting. Let's continue our class. And so... Thanks so much. So you turned into screws again. Does anyone know why that is? Because we have to hide ourselves from humans. But you don't have to hide yourself from Professor Eugenius. But we didn't know it was him at the door. Right you are. You had already transformed before you had time to think. And that's what we call a reflex. <laughs> to explain it in simple words, a reflex is when our body reacts to something automatically without needing any time at all to think about it. When we touch something very hot, we instantly jerk our hand back. When we're about to fall, we swing our arms and legs to try to keep our balance. <laughs> Just imagine what would happen if we started thinking how and in which direction to move them. So it's fair to say that our reflexes help to protect us. Ah! No kidding, they protect us. Ugh, my nose itches. Achoo! Excuse me, I didn't mean it. Professor, uh, sneeze. Is that also a reflex? It most certainly is one. Fire didn't want to, but then his nose tickled and achoo! Mm, bless you, too. Thank you. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, do dogs also have, uh, reflexes? Of course dogs have reflexes. All animals do. Yeah! It's something all good animal trainers know. They use the animal's reflexes to teach them tricks. Many humans teach their pets lots of commands, like to bring a ball, to count, or even to dance. But to train a pet, you gotta know what to do. A good animal trainer always has plenty of treats handy. As soon as an animal follows a command correctly, like standing on its hind legs or jumping over a hurdle, the animal gets a treat. And then the trainer makes a unique signal right away, like clicking his fingers or blowing a whistle. After repeating this training over and over, the animal develops a reflex. Once it gets the signal, it carries out the command and then gets a treat. But the most important thing about animal training is to love your trainee and never hurt it. <gasps> Otherwise, no treat will work. Tom Thomas, we just learned in Fixie School how you can train Chusaka. Yeah? With the help of reflexes. With what? Where's Chusaka? Call her. Chusaka, come here. Give her a math problem, a nice simple one. Add this to that. Now what do you get? It's a miracle! Three! You got it! No, it's not a miracle. Science is what it is. You know how Chusaka barks whenever she sees a fixie around. That's what we call a reflex, you know. I understand. And do you know how I can teach her jumping? Well, we didn't figure that out yet. Wait a sec! I know how! Chasing fixies! Isn't that one of Chusaka's reflexes? Probably, although... That's great! So let's go and train the dog. <sighs> Nothing's ever too much for a good friend. Chusaka! <sighs> it's pretty tough work being a dog trainer. They need to learn to save us from disasters. There isn't one appliance that they don't know about. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. But if you need a fix it, please don't let their secret out. The drum. Now, let's turn it on. It's buzzing. You hear it? I would love to. But the only thing I can hear is Nolik's banging. Nolik, what are you doing? I'm rehearsing my solo. Nolik's the drummer in our rock band. Didn't you know that? 
Why don't you go and rehearse somewhere else, if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, all right. I just can't work like this. No, like, stop it, please. Oh, my head is just splitting. Professor Eugenius, will you come to the laboratory? There's something very strange in there. What? I'm hearing some kind of awful sound. You are? I think it's a ghost. Back from the dead. Don't you worry about ghosts, Lisa. I'll check what it is. Hmm. So it's you making the racket. What? I'm just rehearsing. Well, what is it? Uh, don't worry. It's just a piece of equipment rattling. You know what you should do? You should go and practice back at home, my young friend. It's not very hard to make a drum. One way to make it is to take an empty barrel and replace its bottom with a skin made of leather or plastic. If the skin is stretched tightly, the sound can get very bright and loud. Really big drums are usually played with percussion mallets or beaters, while smaller drums can be played with sticks or with bare hands. Instruments that make sounds by being shaken, scraped, or beaten are all called percussion instruments. There are lots of different percussion instruments, like the small hand drums that are called bongos, big shakers with handles called maracas, cymbals made out of metal. Now those really make a lot of noise. And there's tambourines, ratchets, and even spoons. That's right! People can make music using spoons as a percussion instrument. Tom Thomas, do you think I could practice my drumming here? Yeah. Go ahead. I've just got some homework to do. I can do that, and better than you can, too. And what if I play like this, huh? Then I'll go like that, or like that. Please 
and snakes. Ooh. My friend Katya asked me to take care of him while she's away. That's why I brought him here. Take care of who? There's no one in there. Ah! <laughs> what is that? <laughs> it's a chameleon, Nolik. I think he's awesome. It's a bad idea to take him out. He might run away. Don't you worry. I got him. What a monster. But how come I couldn't see him before? It's because a chameleon knows how to disguise himself by changing the color of his whole body. <laughs> have you ever seen a military uniform? They have special patterns and colors that help soldiers hide. That's called camouflage, and people learned it from animals. For instance, a caterpillar can look like a twig, and a seahorse can look like a piece of coral. An ordinary gray rabbit becomes white in the winter, so a wolf will have trouble finding it in the snow. But the champion of camouflage is the chameleon. This master of disguise can change its color in just a matter of seconds. Hey, Tom Thomas, where'd your chameleon go? Oh, it disappeared. It didn't disappear, it camouflaged. He won't hide for long. Let's find him. Chusaka, have you seen the chameleon? Where is he? Do you see him? No, he's not gonna let us catch him. We're gonna have to, to trick him into coming to us. We can set a trap with something that he likes. What do they like, I wonder? What else? Their food. And what do chameleons eat? Well, like flies or caterpillars, roaches. Where's the fly going to come from? Well, what if... What? Oh, Simka, just you wait. I'm going to get you. Hey, we've got to help Katya. You don't see the caterpillar complaining. Quiet. Nolik, you start buzzing. Buzzing? Yeah, like a fly. Yeah, and flap your wings, too. <laughs> Simka, how long do I gotta keep doing this? Until the chameleon shows himself. Just keep buzzing. <laughs> that make them blend into their surroundings, and even fly in special planes that can't be seen by radar. They do everything they can to disguise their location. But it's not just the army that uses disguises. Photographers camouflage themselves to take pictures of wild animals. People use makeup to camouflage their blemishes. And artists, they disguise old walls with bright, happy pictures. And people just love to put on masquerade parties where they disguise themselves in costumes and masks. And of course, Fixies have their own great disguise. Remember? Well, what is it? Now he won't run away. So 
well, Mr. Master of Disguise. What are you gonna say now? If only I could disguise myself that well. Nolan, what are you talking about? You know how to disguise yourself a hundred times better than him. Ah, oh, you're right. Hey, chameleon, look and learn. Here's a real disguise. Please don't let their secret out. 